At least one generally predictable genre has been shaken up over the last few days. The genre, presidential debates and interviews, the man who shook it up, Tucker Carlson. Tucker hosted a candidate forum in Des Moines, Iowa. The Blaze aired it. And it wasn't a proper presidential debate in that he was just grilling candidates individually. But Tucker woke up Friday morning and Tucker chose violence. And Tucker burned down about half the GOP presidential field. The most brutal exchange of the day was with Mike Pence and it concerned the war in Ukraine. You are, distra- you. You are distressed notice. that the Ukrainians don't have enough American tanks. Every city in the United States has become much worse over the past three years. Yeah. Drive around. There's not one city that's gotten better in the United States. Okay. And it's visible. Our economy has degraded. The suicide rate has jumped. Public filth and disorder and crime have exponentially increased. Right. And yet... Your concern is that the Ukrainians, a country most people can't find on a map, who've received tens of billions of U.S. tax dollars, don't have enough tanks. I think it's a fair question to ask, like, where's the concern for the United States in that? Well, it's not my concern. (laughs) Tucker, I've heard that routine from you before, but that's not my concern. I'm running for president of the United States because I think this country's in a lot of trouble. I think Joe Biden has weakened America at home and abroad. And as president of the United States, we're going to restore law and order in our cities. We're going to secure our border. We're going to get this economy moving again. Okay. It's a terrible answer. It was a terrible answer. It almost certainly destroyed what chance there was for Mike Pence's presidential campaign. And yet, I think Pence's critics are being a little disingenuous here. It seems clear enough to me that Mike Pence was not actually saying that the American interest is not his concern. I know that's what it sounds like, but if we're being charitable and we're being honest here, I don't think that's actually what he's saying. Tucker says, well, all this terrible stuff's happening in America. Your concern is that Ukraine doesn't have enough American tanks. Well, where's the concern for the American interest? And Mike Pence says, well, that's not my concern. What do you think he's referring to there? Do you think he's referring to that little bit at the end? Or do you think that Mike Pence started formulating his answer when Tucker said, your concern is that Ukraine doesn't have enough American tanks? And he was planning to give this canned packaged answer, which he immediately launches into, which is America's in trouble. You know, and he just, he just goes right into the stump speech. It's obviously the latter. And yet the the result is going to be the same. It's, It's not that people are dunking on Pence here because of his his answer in this exchange. People are highlighting this exchange because they already want to dunk on Pence because they already don't support him. And I know the effect of that is, is identical, but he's not really saying that. It's just that people believe that his the, the, the uncharitable way of interpreting his answer gets to a deeper truth, perhaps an unwitting and unconscious truth about Pence's answer, which is they view Mike Pence as being a representative of this mid-2000s kind of Republican orthodoxy that's much more concerned about cutting taxes at home, not really fighting the culture war all that hard, and policing the world and engaging in adventures abroad. Fair or unfair, that's what they think that Pence is after, and Pence's answer did not do him any service there. Pence, though, by the way, always had a pretty much impossible path in this presidential race. The people who support Trump hate him because Pence refused to hold up the certification of the the votes on election day. The people who hate Trump hate Pence because Pence made a deal with the devil and served as the vice president for Trump for four years. So his support base basically did not exist. And he's been trying to navigate these two fields. It It was not going to work. And then Tucker came in and just pulled that pin out of the grenade, threw it into the Mike Pence presidential campaign, and fairly or unfairly, completely blew it up. Right now, go to GoodRanchers.com, use promo code Knowles. You know I love anything made with top-of-the-line quality for me. That is Good Ranchers, period. The only thing missing is a pork box. And then if you ask, they deliver. Good Ranchers has just launched their prime pork, 100% American pork that is steakhouse quality. This new pork box comes with bone-in and boneless pork chops, sausage, smoked brats, 
and more. Plus, right now, you will get 30 bucks off with code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, at GoodRanchers.com. On their site, you can explore all their all-American cuts of prime pork, prime beef, and better-than-organic chicken options. If you've tried their beef and chicken before, you know how phenomenal it is. got to try this prime pork at least once. Trust me, these guys, the quality is unsurpassed. The other guys don't even come close. It's, it's my favorite meal. It's my favorite meal that I can look forward to of any regular week when I come home. What are you waiting for? Enjoy real meat and real service today with Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, for 30 bucks off any box. Promo code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, at GoodRanchers.com. GoodRanchers.com. American meat delivered. The other candidate who did not fare terribly well from this grilling by Tucker, Senator Tim Scott. Stop this war and, yeah. and reach a peace as, as one does, where both sides, you know, concede some of their interests. Like, why wouldn't that be in our interest to do that? I think the faster we get to peace, the better off we are. What we don't want to do, from my perspective, is allow ourselves to ask for a premature peace that cannot be achieved as the alliances continue to come together. Uh, to the extent that we can find our path out of this situation, the better off we are. So what's the point at which we'll know that we've achieved our goal? Just, and, and I say that within the context of having watched 20 years of occupation in Afghanistan where nobody could answer the question, what's the point? Yes. And no one in Congress ever asked that question, amazingly. So what is the, what is the specific goal here? Yeah, so I would say that the objective should be for Zelensky and Ukraine to be able to achieve victory by maintaining as much of their territory as they possibly can and then seeing the resources that we've deployed along with our Western alliances, achieving the peace that I believe comes when you get these two folks to sit down and have a conversation that allows them to determine where those lines will be drawn for the next hundred years. Okay. <laughs> Tucker just lets it go. Okay. But Tim Scott didn't say anything there. He, he did his best and he's a nice guy, but he didn't say anything. He said, I want peace. But we need we we shouldn't achieve a peace before we can have a peace that is achievable. And Tucker presses him and says, "Well, what's that look like? When do we know we've achieved the peace that is achievable?" And he says, "Well, it's when these guys, Putin and and Zelensky, when they sit down and they have a conversation." Okay, what's the point of the conversation? Well, the point of the conversation is going to be they're going to work out what the limits are. Yeah, right. That's the question. What are the limits? What What is it? What is the, okay, check, check, check. We've got our, we've accomplished our goals. Now the war is over. Well, he says it a little bit earlier in the answer. He says, well, it's when Zelensky can keep as much of his land as he possibly can. Okay, well, as much of his land as he possibly can keep is all of it. So now you're saying that the war is going to continue until Ukraine maintains its territorial integrity that it had before what? Two years ago? That it had before 2014? That it had before the invasion of Crimea? That it had? That's never going to happen. This is a thousand year territorial dispute that we're talking about in Ukraine. So Tim Scott's answer effectively is we're going to have war forever. Which was, the, which was the answer in Afghanistan, but the, the imperialists who supported that didn't have the courage of their convictions to actually say it. Maintaining an overseas empire is a common theme throughout history, and it's a defensible position. Might not be your position, might not be my position. It's a defensible one, but the people who were arguing for that couldn't really make the argument. They didn't want to make the argument. Because when, when you ask these imperialists when you ask these foreign adventurists, what is the goal of this war? The answer is the goal is to keep it going. And what the, the more conservative people are saying right now, lowercase c conservative, they're saying, well, you know, when you're just engaged in an open-ended war with a nuclear former superpower where you're encroaching on a buffer state that previously separated you two guys who were at a, on the brink of nuclear war for the back half of the 20th century, closest we've ever come to an all-out nuclear war, uh, that gets pretty dangerous. And no one, except for like one guy at a candidate forum, no one seems to want to press the candidates on that question as we all sleepwalk into World War III.
Boy, what a great clip that was. Make sure you ring that bell, subscribe to The Michael Knowles Show. We'll see you next time.